Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Today, we're going to talk about some of the ways that neuroscientists use to actually measure what's going on in our clear minds. I call this lecture, uh, How Do We Know What We Know? And I'm going to talk about some of the methods that neuroscientists use to measure the anatomy of the brain and also the function of the brain. And as I promised you a couple days ago, uh, we'll use one of your brains to actually demonstrate how your brain can control a machine. And because this is a kind of a experiment, you never know what's going to happen. But we'll give it a try. So we'll start with how we know what nerve cells look like. And this is the neuroanatomy of uh, brain cells. The first thing that scientists can do, and what has been done for uh, more than 100 years, is to stain the, uh, the cell body of a nerve cell. And that's what's shown here in this picture here. So the large uh, circular type of structure here, this is the cell body. And does anybody know what this little white circle in the middle of the cells might be? What do you think that white circle is? That's Fats. Not the fat. I, I heard it over here. Yeah, it's, that's right. It's the it's the right. That's the nucleus of the cell. That's where all the genetic material of the cell is contained. But when you stain the neural tissue in this manner, all you see is a cell body. The other parts of the nerve cell, like the axon and the terminal and the dendrites, you can't really see. Uh, but yet, with this kind of staining, you could still see the major nuclei, uh, the major groupings of cell in different parts of the brain. Uh, another type of stain is, this is called the Golgi stain. And if you remember, and I believe the first lecture, uh, Camille Golgi, the Italian neuroscientist, discovered this technique. And 
And I think I mentioned that he discovered this by accident, where he put his section of tissue into a uh, container of chemicals and forgot about it. And when he looked the next day, he had this beautiful staining of the entire nerve cell. <laughs> So you can see in this particular kind of stain, you can see the cell body, the dendrites, and then the axon. And uh, for some reason with the Golgi stain, it only stains about 10% of the neurons. And nobody really knows why when you use this stain, why it only stains 10%. But uh, if it stained all of them, it would look completely black. So it's a good thing that only 10% for some reason stain. Uh, a third type of cell staining that <laughs> scientists use is uh, track tracing. And in track tracing, a chemical is picked up by the cell and then is transported by the cell to wherever its axon goes. Or reverse, it can be picked up like the reuptake that we did. It can be picked up by the uh, terminal and transported back to the cell body. And in that way, you can tell that one cell goes to a different part of the brain. Mm -hmm. And this is an example, this is one of my, uh, actually both of these are mine, but this one shows that how a nerve cell picks up a fluorescent material, uh, like fluorescent lights, when you put a fluorescent light, it, it fluoresces red, and it's picked up and it's transported all the way to the place that this cell connects to a different cell. Mm -hmm. And and a fourth way that neuroscientists can study which neurochemicals are involved in different places of the brain is by a method called immunocytochemistry. And in this particular method, the body's immune system is used to create antibodies against a particular neurotransmitter. And then the cells can be stained to see where those antibodies for a particular neurochemical are located. Mm -hmm. So these are some methods to tell about what the structure of the nervous system looks like and which parts are connected to each other. But it doesn't say anything about function. It just says things about the anatomy. 
Tadi ni kita lama sih pergi tang nenek suruh angkut ni wang zat cabang kurang ni suh kandai yume, ibu kandai yume. Tapi ni wang zat cabang kurang ni tadi nenek dusun ni ni kuat dugu yume, ni susu sewu susu sewu dugu ares. Tapi ni wang zat cabang kurang ni cile dugu la, anda di kita lama sih kita dugu yume ares. Kalau lea kalau cikgu mindi. So many people find neuroanatomy a little bit boring because it doesn't say anything about how the brain works. It just says what is there, but it doesn't say how it works. But neuroanatomists find this very interesting, and in fact, when you look at some of these pictures, to me, it actually looks like it's a beautiful artwork. But let's talk about brain function and some ways that the function of the brain can be measured. Uh, and there are a couple different ways uh, that we can do this. Uh, one is by, uh, remember we talked about how nerve cells have channels for sodium and potassium. By taking a fine glass uh, tube, it can be heated and pulled, so the glass gets thinner and thinner and thinner until the tube is very, very small. That very small opening can then be put on a channel and the uh, flow of ions between the, across the membrane can be measured through that tube that has a little bit of saline solution in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shoot uh, and that technique is called patch clamp recording because we're recording the ion flow across individual channels. Uh, much better. So, if this is our nerve cell, and we wanted to record the electrical activity from this nerve cell with an electrode, where are some places that we could put the, an electrode. That they want the tabu in Mishasha was ra. Once you want the tabu in a, what that they can name with the Taila, long name to go thus, long name quality to invest. We talked about uh, this first technique, which is called patch clamp. That's recording from a very, very small part of some of those ion channels. But where else might we put an electrode? And then you can tell them to go to the quality and that's ra. Uh, <laughs> Maybe on the dendrite. So maybe here. So you could maybe put uh, an electrode uh, here. 
So yes, that's one thing that we can do. And if you put an electrode here, it's uh, outside the nerve cell. The nerve cell puts out a little bit of electricity like a battery, and you can record the electrical activity just outside of a nerve cell. And this type of recording is called an extracellular recording because it's outside of the nerve cell. Where else can we put this electrode? Maybe on the terminal. Maybe on the terminal. Uh, maybe you can put the terminal, but it's very, very small. So it's unlikely that uh, you would get too much activity unless there was another nerve cell here. So you could put it. You could put it inside. You could put it here. And if you put it inside of the nerve cell, it's called an intracellular recording. Which do you think is easier, uh, to record outside of a nerve cell or inside of a nerve cell? How many say it's outside? How many say, how many say it's easier inside? Actually, it's much easier to record outside. <laughs> and part of the problem is that if you put an electrode and you put it inside of a nerve cell, it breaks the membrane and all of the material inside the nerve cell come out. So unless there's a good seal, you'll actually kill the cell by putting it inside. <laughs> And you also have to have a much uh, thinner electrode to go inside the nerve cell. To go outside, you can put it uh, close, you can put it a little bit further away, uh, so you can be a lot more, uh, you don't have to be as careful recording outside compared to going inside. And you can also put a, an electrode that's a little bit bigger in, uh, near a group of electro, uh, a group of nerve cells and record from many nerve cells at one time. So you can record inside of nerve cell, outside of nerve cell, from a group of nerve cells as well. So for that's for individual nerve cells. Now if this is a head uh, where this is these are the eyes and this would be the nose of a person, this is the person's head, 
this is the brain, where can we put an electrode to record the activity from the brain? Okay, so so he's pointing to the top. So you can put an electrode and record from on top of this on top of the skin, on top of the scalp. That's one place. Where else? So he, he thinks that you know there is uh, he said you no know, we can put electron inside the brain yeah. inside the head. Right. I, I told him why uh, by uh, making a hole through the skull and he said no, not through the skull but you said there is something uh, fluid above the skull. So yeah. So 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 he's right. So we could we, we we could put a hole in the skull and put an electrode and put it on top of the brain. So we can do that. And in fact, during surgery for epilepsy, and, 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 and in surgery for epilepsy, they actually make a big uh, flap where they take the bone off and they can put an electrode directly on the top of the brain. And a third place that we can put an electrode is actually inside of the brain. Uh, which one should we do today? For, uh, for, for him, maybe we'll do it inside. <laughs> <laughs> Natural. No. To, to, today, today uh, we'll actually just do the the non-invasive way of measuring activity, and that is on top of the scalp, and that is called an EEG. And that's a, a non-invasive, it's safe, we're recording activity from the brain, we're not putting any electrical signals into the brain. And uh, as you see here, these are three different types of signals. The top one is the uh, channel recording. The middle one is an individual, the, the action potentials. Each of these are the action potentials that we talked about coming from a single nerve cell. And this is the EEG, which is from the outside of the brain, which is measuring the activity from thousands or millions of neurons at the same time. So this is channels, this is one nerve cell, and this is many, many nerve cells at one time. Mm -hmm. 
Dalian shake je. Di kalna, orang zaman pun cik kita harus tunggu ini. Dalian kahsan, an action potential lah kahsan love shows kan zula. Action potential leh wadah, dah di tukulan tunggu orang. Oh, di tu dah di orang zaman pun cik kerja das. Di kalau orang zaman pun mangku sunyam tu cinta, di nalu orang zaman pun saya cik yosis kris, mangku show yosis. Jadi sama nyam tu gen dah jenis shake je des. Uh, and so this is an illustration of how the EEG is recorded. And although I said that every brain is different, just like a fingerprint, there are general landmarks which are similar from person to person. Ani ngaco jukti juku gitu jukti nasi sini loka 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 yores mire mire kuna lah suas di yo yo teh ini lah ni tu bangku cik mi sama lah canggung yores cinta. And if if you feel on the back of your head, right at the base, there's a little bump. So go ahead and feel on the back. You can feel a little bump on the back of your scalp, back of your head. There's a little bump. Kesi kenal tu lah. Jauh lo lawa canggung nasi lah. Di jauh lo dia lah sebab buat tunggu tu hak tunggu dia beres. Do you feel that little bump? Kima dia lah mah dus jadi ya tu cerah. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's just called, uh, it's just, the name of it is called the Inian. And then just the bump on your nose, that is a place called the Nasion. That's just, uh, uh, when people put electrodes on, they use these two landmarks to, to uh, put the EEG uh, electrodes on. The mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. this wall is called the Inian. This wall is called the Inian. This wall is called the Inian. This Di nagu dam di tombas tuas, rugu tombas di lani nasion lawores, nagu dam di cek dingi. Tapi dingi ni sih nanti kacau macam ni, kacau ni di tuan la nas ra. Antar ee ji la, log ni cukup juga la kunci kita dengi sih di bawah ini dalan. Saya tu tu cek hawa orang, di hawa esok tu, dengi sih pinggu tu, di mana yang antu di bawah tu tak kunci di bawah lani log ni cukup yores. And they consider that distance from the back to the front as 100% and they can measure that with a ruler and so regardless of whether somebody has a big head or a small head that's always 100% and they do the same thing from left to right starting from each ear from one side to the other, that's considered 100%. And using those coordinates, electrodes can be put on different parts of the brain, and that way it can be uniform from person to person. And this is just an example of uh, many, many neuro, uh, many, many electrodes uh, that are then recorded from in the EEG record. And what's the next one? Okay, what we're going to do bef before this is I have a sh very short video. And so when I hit play, uh, the, each of these lines, each of these lines represent a different electrode. And on this axis is time. And again, each of these little lines is recording the activity from thousands of uh, 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 thousands of nerve cells just underneath those electrodes. And if you look carefully at this record, you can see that each line is a little bit different than the other lines. No line is exactly the same because it's recording from a different group of nerve cells underneath the electrode from different parts of the brain.
So when I hit play, you'll see the, uh, the waveforms change as time goes on. So, so that's the EG uh, over time. And this can be recorded while people are doing things, when people are sleeping, or when people are thinking uh, different things. And now what we're going to do is see how we can use this electrical activity. So what I have here is a, uh, a device that we can record from 14 different locations on the scalp, which are recording activity underneath <coughs> each of these little spots. And this device communicates wirelessly through a Bluetooth to this computer. And I've put a little bit of, it's just a, a salt solution on each of the foam pads so that it makes good contact with the scalp. So now I need a victim, uh, no, 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 a, a volunteer uh, to help. <laughs> You know, we, we, can, we can do maybe one or we can do maybe two people. We can do two people. Yeah, we'll, we'll do, we'll, we can do, yeah, we'll do one and then we'll do another one. Why is it? Why is it? Why is it? No, I'm not sure why it's like that. Okay, so anyways, we'll, 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 we'll try it. Uh, so what we have here are the, each of these black spots here represents one spot of the electrode. And uh, the power switch is just on the back here, and and when the electrodes are making good contact, the color of of the black will change color. Okay. That's not bad. And we'll turn it on. So, so while we're getting, so while we're getting the set up, what should we ask him to do uh, when uh, to control the cube? Stop thinking. So, so we need what we need to do. What we need to do. The best thing is something different. Oh, good. It's already starting. Oh, this is great. Oh, this is very good. We have we have a good tech. We have a good technician here. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a good brain too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one's really good. This, this, this is this. He has, he has an, he has an excellent brain. Or because <laughs> the, the more, the more green, the more green we have, the better the signal is. Levas <laughs> <laughs> That's that's probably good enough. That's that's a that this is this uh, having this many green electrodes is actually really 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 good. <laughs> so so we have and also you can see the location the general locations of the electrodes. The one going up that's the nose, and so the front electrodes are over his frontal lobe, right? 
Da di ha gu yuas tu, di cah cah di ha lagi lagi nak udah das, lah. Di tu lagi lagi dua ledi, dua ledi, dua dap juas, tuan di. Cepat bawa. Yeah, this is this is excellent. This is excellent. Okay, so the first thing that we'll do is we'll train in a in a neutral condition. Tapi ni lagi lagi orang kita ni mungkin ni kau di jangkar tu kita das. So in the neutral condition, your your mind should be you shouldn't think about anything. So. Okay, that's starting now. Okay, for some reason, for some reason we're back. Okay, so we saved the training session, and now we're going to train uh, for the uh, the pushing. So. So what should we have him do, which is different from nothing? Angry. Get angry. Get angry? Can you? Can you? Remember, we want it. We, 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 we. <laughs> so it should be something that he, he shouldn't. He can't move. He can't move. It just has to be the brain only. So it should be something. Sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, get up on the other side. Another one. In general, you go down the middle of the road. Is it some road you go down the street? Is it just a road? Yeah, something. Okay. 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 So, so start. Start. That was doing this. That girl come here. This year. Okay. Wait. And, and, do the, and do that one more time. Start thinking that now. Kela komrochis, komrochis. Yam shostri. Mi pa shostri. Yam mi pa shostri. Ta dedo. Kazni ete pa. Okay, let's just try. Let's just try one more time. One more time. Starting. One more time. One more time. Starting. Kela kutsua. Oya. And one more time, starting now. Okay, now we'll see if he, how much control he has. So now he, ha he should have, he should be able, I, Palin, he can switch between the neutral state and the thinking state. So see if you have control over those two states by the cube now. So, so, so far the cube hasn't been moving. So start thinking about food and see if you can push the cube back. Okay, so see if you can think about food now and, and push the push the cube back. There goes. <laughs> Think about delicious food. Good. Good. So he's see it's staying there. So when that pattern of activity is correlated to pushing, he can push it backwards. 
Now, let's try to add one more degree of freedom to the cube. So, we'll add spinning of the cube. So, we have to, he has to think of something that's different than thinking of food to make the cube spin. So we'll add a spinning. Okay, so what should we have him do that's different of thinking of food that creates a different pattern of activity? So we want, in this case, we we're going to have him thinking of food will make it push, but we need him to think of something different to make it spin. And, and, and the best thing would be to activate some part of the brain that's much different than activating the part of his brain than when he's thinking about food. So it should be a much different pattern of activity, activating different parts of the brain. <laughs> But, but he, should, he should do math just, just with his head. He shouldn't do any, should, any movement. Okay. Just he could think, just thinking about math. Okay. And, and he doesn't have to think about spinning, he just has to think about something different and the computer will learn that that something different is a different action of the cube. Okay. Yeah, not yet, not yet. This, this one, this there. This ready? Ready? Starting, so we're going to be training him to spin the cube starting. Okay, ready to do math? They're starting now. More math? More math. <laughs> okay, now we'll see if he has control of the two different states. Pushing will be thinking of food, and rotating it will be math. Okay, now he should have control. So think about food or do math. Food. <laughs> he really likes food. Is that still food? Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Gel şen sonra yapar da sana dayar. Niçin saksım kalır düğün domda gel. Niçin saksım kalır düğün. Is he trying? Is he, is he, try, is he, is he trying math? But it's yeah. not working. He's trying. He's trying. Gel açın iyi düşünme gönle kazı çakır. <laughs> so what what was he doing just then? What, what was? I I asked him to divide twelve by three, oh. so he was doing that. And so he was doing a, a more complicated math, or maybe a new math problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how about how about have him do uh, uh, two times two? Uh, it was four. Four times four. Uh, six times six. Try that. Okay. That's actually working. Two the sum. She do has it, she did. Get us get us some. And now think of food. <laughs> oh. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Now, th now think of food. <laughs> there go and there it goes. So there it goes. So the computer is learning. The computer is learning that a particular brain activity is correlated to a different action of the cube. Okay, so you can give a clap to our... So, so that that was just a uh, a simple, very very quick demonstration of the possibilities of using electrical activity of the brain to control a machine. That did round so again. That I log now. You log that it's all lane. And today we're dancing. She has she just done a tablet. She got raw. Did Leila show you? Oh, did Leila stand up? She had it. You can imagine that. Uh, Someone who has lots and lots of training of using this machine with the computer, if someone couldn't move, they could get those different brain signals to actually make something happen to them, uh, happen for them. So, for example, somebody who's paralyzed, instead of making the cube go back, maybe it could make a robotic arm bring them something to drink. And instead of thinking about moving the cube in a spinning direction, it might be it could cause a light to go on to call to call a helper to help them. Okay. 
And the challenge to scientists is to decode what all those lines mean so that those lines actually have meaning. And that's a big challenge, especially when it's recorded from the outside where the signals are so far from the actual source, the brain.